Hey, I need you to do me a favor, Professor. Take off the lab coat. Put on the tuxedo because it's award season, baby. We're giving out some awards. We had the announcement earlier this week for our uh, all-MLR team, which uh, is, is become a, a great tradition here in Major League Rugby for our first and second, and then honorable mentions this year as well. So as, as the talent pool deepens, there was a lot of uh, nominees. So great stuff. You can get online onto the uh, MLR socials to check out those teams. We're going to have a few of them on here who won their positional awards. And I'm not going to give away the name, so you're going to have to listen for an extra 10 seconds. But let's start things off. Your drum roll for me. Brrr, uh, National Lampoons. Is that two pop culture? You got that one? The other one? No, 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 no. Got lights? Cool. Okay. Uh, let's kick things off with the big one. Our player of the year, who is coming up now ourselves in a good spot to be number one and then uh you know la ran away with it but to be able to clinch playoffs uh with without playing without having to play the last game that's a that's a big uh big achievement for us at, at utah and um uh, just great great momentum moving forward and hopefully we can you know finish the job uh come next year so just just really happy really proud of my guys Oh, well, Utah, it's a, um, it's definitely, you know, it's more part, part-time than full-time. Uh, with Legion, you know, we were there early in the morning and training all the way to 3.30. But at Utah, most of the guys on our team have full-time jobs. Uh, you know, some guys work construction, some guys are roofers, some guys are teachers. And, you know, they come, uh, they come to practice at 6 p.m. and we finish at 10. Uh, it's just... You know they're they're working their whole day, the whole day from you know nine to five and then six to ten. So that was the biggest thing I noticed. And uh, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to ask a lot out of a guy who's been on the roof all day and then come to practice. Uh, best performance, um, I'd have to say, I believe is the the first Houston game. Uh, finally, me and Mika, I think it was our it might have been our first game together, but we eventually well, we started to link up really well. That was fun being able to, you know, put him away and uh, him putting me away and then putting Basco away. And we were just playing running rugby, uh, especially going down 12 0 in like the first five minutes. One, I knew that our team could fight back from deficits. And two, um, you know, we we're pretty dangerous once we get the ball out, you know, to our to our wide men. So, uh, yeah, I think that was one of the that was a big, big eye opener for us. Like, hey, man, we can we can play rugby in this league and we can uh, get the job done if we if we really want it. I think um, I think those games that we came back, we just we just believed, you know, you know, we're not we're not the team to go score three tries in 10 minutes. We're the team that'll are, you know, we'll go down 07, seven points and then we're, we're going to fight back the whole game either way. And sometimes we give away like easy or lucky tries, but we kind of just told, I, I kind of just told the boys like, hey, everything we do is earned. You know, we don't want, I mean, we would love like a lucky bounce every now and then, but we didn't get the lucky bounce the first, you know, seven games. Uh, eventually, you know, our luck eventually came when we're winning games at the 83rd minute, 82nd minute, 85th minute. Um, yeah, you know, bounce of a ball, bounce of our ball, but you know, we earned all those tries. You know, those 17 points against uh, San Diego, we earned those in the last 13 minutes of the game? Uh, let's start with what, what happened. I think uh, LA was, was good on the day. I mean, the brilliant side. Um, for us to beat them, we would have had to be on our best again, um, especially in dry weather. They love throwing the ball around. And uh, I think they just, they probably came out, dominated us a bit uh, physically where that is probably our strength. Um, they took away some of our strength in the set piece to Dave Dennis and them. They did really well competing. So I think they put us under pressure in where we are strong. And uh, we just couldn't, I say, let's say, get get uh, solutions quick enough um, to overturn that. And uh, what we'll do different is probably just, I think, being a very young squad this year, uh, everyone learned a lot out of that, out of that uh, occasion. And going forward, we'll know what, what it will have to take to win it next year or the year after. Uh, personally, for me, uh, I think uh, for me, the game that we played LA in Atlanta, um, we, we really focused on disrupting their set piece a lot. And I think I got uh, one or two line out steals, even Manu and Connor Cook 
uh, we really did well disrupting them and they couldn't launch off that. So I think um, for me being in charge of that line out set piece, uh, it was great to, to, to get some return on that and see that it, yeah, we, we really put some pressure on them there. And I think that's what helped us get that game. Um, yeah, and team wise, I think our team, just Nola, that, that I think that was the mm. turning point for our season, really. So yeah, uh, for for the two performances, personally and our team, that was it. <laughs> I think Marky did well. Uh, he had a brilliant. Uh, he was probably what's the word revelation for us when he when he came there. Uh, I think he he really sparked things up. Um, really made us get some momentum in the back. And uh, yeah, I think Mark probably deserves deserves all the credit for it. Um, too bad he couldn't, I mean, make the team all the time. There was just so much depth in our back line that it was tough to pick a side and that's always good. So, uh, but yeah, and then, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess unlucky for him, but he can, he could definitely just as well be in that first team. Yeah, I suppose it, it was a tough one. It was, it was about probably walking the walk without talking the talk. I think all the talk was done for us um, externally and by everyone else. So we had this expectation that you're talking about and then probably just about living up to it. We, we knew from day one, once the squad was assembled, that we had a squad that was capable of winning the competition. Um, but it's not as easy as, as, as it is said. So um, I'd, I'd probably say culture is the number one reason that we did win this competition. Um, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you're not clicking off the field, then it's just not going to go right for you. And, you know, credit to Darren Coleman, his staff and Dave Dennis. Um, you know, culture was probably the number one thing they drove from the very beginning. Um, we're a very vulnerable group. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's quite a big question because I feel like um, it's something that's sort of evolving in the sport and away from the sport, sort of in the background anyway, around sort of, I feel like it sort of touches into men's mental health, um, general well-being, the whole, just the, the general health space. But probably something that I started playing around with when I started playing professionally about eight or nine years ago, uh, in the background, as you said, it was probably something, there was a stigma around doing things that um, potentially would make you better, but was sort of frowned upon because it just wasn't something that rugby players did because we're these tough guys that go out to battle each week. And then during the week, we lift weights, we get, we train hard and, you know, that's sort of, it is what it is. And, um, you know, it's a funny one. I, it's probably one that a lot of people wouldn't pick. Um, but personally, it was actually the first time we played Seattle. It was the game that I got injured in. Uh, it was only round two and I feel like in round one, I'd played okay, sort of just finding my feet in the league, what the competition was all about. Um, but I came out and I was, I was sort of, I've, I've actually looked, I've got my notes from that second game around the way I was going to approach the game. And I felt like I could really, if I played the one I played the way I wanted to play, I could really dominate this league in the midfield. And I sort of wrote a couple of things down around um, manifestation around that game. And I went out and I did exactly what I said I was going to do. And for the first 26 minutes of that game, I was just, Sometimes when you're playing, you're just in the zone. And I was I was just in that zone. Every time I touched the ball, I felt like I could beat defenders. I was I felt like I had time on the ball. Uh, defensively, I felt super comfortable. And it's just one of those games that I felt like I was just in my groove, so. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I, I thought, I, I always look at things just like kind of, you go in there, give it your best effort, like to genuinely put everything 100% into it and good things will happen, so. That's the kind of way I looked into it. I was like, I'm gonna dedicate myself, whatever coaches else to do, I'm gonna do. Um, and, and I and obviously, as an athlete, you know what it takes. Like, you know if you're working hard, you know if you're doing the things that the coach have asked you, the things that you know you need to be prepared mentally. So coming into the season, I was just kind of like, uh, I don't care about all the outside noise. I don't care about if I'm supposed to play, if I'm not supposed to play, what position I'm supposed to play or whatnot. I'm just gonna come in there, do the best I can every single day, uh, put my maximum effort in. And like I said, you know if you put the maximum effort in or not. So I made sure every single day, I was like, did I do that? And I and I made sure it was a yes answer every single day. And I knew good things would happen. So uh, when I, coming into Nola this year, yeah, I, I wanted to spot, I wanted to play. And I knew it was up to me to make that happen. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, I, I, it was, it's not like, yeah, I, that it was, that's surreal that I was able to get a chance to play with the Eagles uh, this year. And I, I'd be lying if I said it was something, obviously it's like a long-term goal. Um, I was in like the I was in like an academy thing that they had in the uh, the past fall. So like it's kind of it was like a long term goal. Obviously playing as an American player, you want to play for the Eagles, but uh, it wasn't something I was thinking about immediately. 
Uh, I was like I said, I was kind of taking it step by step, like get my foot in the NOLA, uh, play play the best that I can, uh, prove myself in the MLR, and I knew the rest would take care of itself. Um, it happened definitely a little quicker than I thought it would, but obviously I'm very thankful that it happened and honored to represent USA. Oh yeah, so so I think the older guys uh, that come to mind, like uh, you have Cam Dolan, a veteran that kind of takes you under his wing and he like teaches the ropes on the field. Um, and then like more older guys, you have Dino Waldron, um, Eric Howard and Kyle Bailey. Like when I first came in, those were kind of veterans that have played at the, for, for their national teams and they know what it takes at this level. So those are guys that kind of took you in under a wing, showed you some tough love, but they taught you at the same time. And you saw what they did every day and you, you knew by watching them, they, they know what it takes. Obviously they've been doing it for a long time. They've done everything that they possibly could to get to the national team, play overseas, play for the MLR for years. Uh, those are guys who kind of just lead, they lead by example and they'll help you out with stuff on the field as well. So they definitely took me under the wing when I first got here. You know, it was uh, it was quite stressful at times, but uh, overall, like, I think um, we had a lot of fun. I think that can be a, a pretty big foundation for what we did this year. And I think the players really enjoyed themselves. And, you know, as a staff, we enjoyed ourselves coaching the individuals that we have, um, you know, and um, you know, that, that laid the foundation for, you know, I think how successful we really were when people were happy to come to training, happy to come to the meeting, happy to have some really good input into what we were trying to achieve and do. Um, and, and same with the coaching staff and then the staff overall, you know, so, um, you know, this year, you know, we started out really well with the first, the first two wins, you know, um, went into a bit of a slump and then we just kind of ebbed and flowed throughout the rest of the season until we hit that, um, that, that pretty long streak that we got. Um, and that kind of built the foundation for, for where we finished in the semi. Yeah, I think like when we, so when that slump kind of happened, Sean, myself, we, we, we chatted about um, what can we do to make us successful? Well, just keep doing what we're doing because we're, we're scoring tries. We're doing things right. <clears throat> now, what can we tighten up on, you know, penalties and errors? And we ended up being one of the least penalized teams in the league and the least, the least amount of errors as well. So that was a focus point for us when we were going into the season. Um, and then in, that, in those three games, that was kind of something that, you know, peaked its head, was just errors uh, in really key areas of the field that cost other teams to be, uh, well, gave other teams possession inside our own half <clears throat> or penalties uh, that kind of leaked, uh, you know, work teams up the, uh, like march the teams up the pitch. Um, it was, uh, I mean, you know, I'm gonna be honest, Sean's a little more emotional one than I am. So, um, you know, we're both we're both pretty passionate about the game and the players that we have and our team. So, you know, we, um, yeah, we got fiery in the box, <laughs> to say the least, a couple times. And, um, you know, and good discussions were had and debates. And um, it was stressful. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. It yep. was tough in those games. Those games um, where um, the, so, you know, we went through all those wins, those, those comeback wins, stuff like that. So when we played Rooney, that was probably the most calm I was the whole season when we went down by points because I was just like, we've done this before. We're going to do it again. It is what it is. I, I had the feeling calling the game that before a ball was kicked, I kind of got the sniff of an upset because it was it's MLR, man. It's like it always does the right. opposite of what you think it's going to do. And LA was super loose and relaxed and calm. And I'm like, the script says LA wins this game. So Atlanta's gonna win. And it was like our picks this year. You'd almost get inside your own head and talk yourself out of it. Well, it was more like my picks. Like your picks right. worked out pretty well. My picks, I always got in my head and I never got it right. So. Yeah, but as the game got into that arm wrestle, which we all thought Atlanta wanted, but LA were winning the arm wrestle. I'm like, oof. Like if anyone's going to score mean, points, it's going to be LA. I, I think one of the really impressive things that I had, and you probably felt this a little bit more than as you got to um, visit with the LA players after the game, but it certainly was true with the LA players that I, I caught up with when I was there, is that I think that, you know, it's funny you think about it. You've got like Matt Ghetto, Darren Coleman, Dave Dennis, you, you know, um, Adam Ashley Cooper, these guys that have years, decades, right, of professional rugby, but this is the first time any of them have ever created a team from scratch, mm -hmm. right? The first time they've turned up and there's been nothing there. And I think when you talk to all of them, 
they really talked about the culture and that it was the culture of the team that was special. And Dave Dennis in particular, I think, was being, has been a real driver of that culture. And that there's a huge amount of accountability there, that people put their hands up, that they work really hard. And I think it's going to be interesting because there's going to be a lot of change in that roster, right? Um, you know, assistant coach steps up, head coach steps away. You know, some questions about some other guys that are coming back, whether they can hold on to that culture. Because that seemed to be the thing, especially when you talk to the, the, the people involved in the team, that, that's what they'll say is special about it. It wasn't the 100 cat wallabies, right? It was the culture that was around the team that, that made it special. And so it's going to be interesting to see if they can hold on to that. Is it something that's now being created from scratch?